Hey there, fellas. In today's episode, I suggest we try experimenting with a lot of motor. We got a pretty decent one right here, and we actually saw a few requests to fit a third compression ring to a lot of piston to increase, well, the compression. Now, I've never seen anybody try that with a lot of them, though when people do the same thing with motorcycles, it usually tends to work. Now, there's really nowhere you can actually put an extra ring on this piston. But hey, we're curious, we're keen to experiment. So, let's do this. We've got a special merch offer for you, fellas, to brighten the mood in these turbulent times. Starting today, we'll be offering a mystery gift box. When purchasing the box, you're guaranteed to receive a certain selection of stuff from our shop, as well as the chance to win something big. You spend a fixed $30 price for the box, and you're guaranteed to receive a Garage 54 mug, a pair of socks, a sticker, an air freshener for your car, as well as a key fob. One out of ten buyers will be sent an expensive gift on top of that, which could be a cap, t-shirt, hoodie, or a document holder. So we'll be putting something expensive into one out of every ten boxes. If you'd like to support our channel and try your luck, there's gonna be a link in the video description. Hit it. Oh, that's enough. We have eight in this one. Let's try cylinder two. Same story. Number three. 8.3 approximately. And finally, number four. That'll do. About the same as the last one. Seems healthy. We got nice and even compression. So that does it for the compression test. And if we are able to increase it, we should see more torque, more horsepower, and all of the other good stuff. Better not make it too high, though. Okay, now we begin tearing it apart. To pull out... Now, we'll be pulling stuff out a bit later, but in the meantime, we need to remove the head to see what sort of condition the cylinders are in. Yeah, we need to have a look inside, because who knows? We might have broken something with all the joyriding. <laughs> Alright, let's get to it. Okay, here's the engine block. We've torn the motor apart and extracted the pistons. I've sprayed a bit of foam and pretty much gotten rid of any deposits. I gotta say, the cylinders are in excellent condition. The honing is there, we barely got anywhere. Now we just need to figure out where to place the third compression ring. You know what? The piston itself is quite a curious item, but here's what I suggest we do. I think we need to make a new groove to fit a thin piston ring. Now, I do realize that it's going to be under the most stress, and it'll be subject to higher temperature. Anyway, let's call in the lathe operator and find some way to fit an extra piston ring. Let's do this. So, out of curiosity, I've taken a caliper to the cylinders, and they are barely even worn. I mean, they are ever so slightly, but it's so minute that... Overall, they are in excellent condition, which tells us that this engine hasn't seen all that much duty, and as a result, it is very well preserved. And that is a very good thing indeed. Okay, it's time to cut some grooves, fit some rings, assemble the engine and do interesting things.
Okay, gentlemen, check out what we got here. Look here. The upper two slender compression rings, well, I guess we could have placed them together into one groove, but we decided not to go that route. Instead, we thought we'd go hardcore and uh, modify the crown area of the piston, where we had a bit of space to accommodate another piston ring groove. That does leave only a thin ring land, which isn't ideal. Anyway, we cut the groove, the ring moves around nicely in it. All of them do, as a matter of fact. This is actually a three-piece oil ring, consisting of two thin rings and a spring element. I've heard you can't even find these anymore. Anyway, so we've got the additional thin compression ring in there, we've modified all four pistons, everything moves around just like it should, with no trouble whatsoever. Which isn't to say that we have slack, they're just sliding nicely within their grooves. Yeah, we definitely don't want there to be any slack. Now, we decided we're not going to be replacing the old rings. The reason for that being that otherwise we're not going to be able to determine whether this mod had any sort of effect. Unless we do a whole lot of driving before we check. But then, who even knows how long the engine is going to last with this extra ring? Right, I think now might be a good time to assemble the engine, do another compression test, then start the engine and let it run for two, three, maybe even four days, to make sure all of the rings are where they want to be. I mean, yeah, they do move around by default, but the new rings have to be broken in. At that point we'll do another test. You know what, let's figure all of that out as we go, after we assemble the engine. So we'll do that and see if this is actually effective. All right, let's do this. Okay, we've got the motor assembled, everything is looking good. And now? Just like I promised, we'll be conducting a compression test. Now, obviously, we've got a lot of oil inside the cylinders, which will probably increase the compression, though some of it might come out if we turn the engine with no plugs. Go ahead, let's spray some oil. It is quick to spin with no plugs, so we can safely assume that this didn't increase the friction. Go ahead. Enough? A solid 9.5. Cylinder 2. Enough? Same story. The result is absolutely identical. The compression used to be slightly higher in cylinders 3 and 4, so I'm expecting to see at least 10. Go for it! Stop! Aw oh man, a tiny bit more and it would have been 10. It's almost there. So that's 9.8. Now let's try cylinder 4. That's enough. Same as in cylinder 3. So that's a... perfectly even increase all across the board. 1.5 extra kilos in each cylinder. Isn't that nice? We saw an even increase, and I like that. We know that the compression was nice and even before, and it's still nice and even after. Let me just write this down. 9.8. There we go. Now let's start the engine and see what happens. Whether anything breaks, how long that takes. And after the break-in, we... do another compression test. And perhaps a bit of hard driving? to see if the ring lands break. So the plan is to do some testing and see just how reliable all of it is. Let's get to it. 
Everything is ready, we are looking good. It's time to fire this up. If it's even able to. But then again... The ignition timing might be a bit off. Switch it off. Try it again. I'll just leave it like that for now. I'll leave it alone. I think it even runs quieter. Oh, look at all the smoke. Yeah, that's the oil from the cylinders. Well, obviously the oil would have had an effect. It might be why we saw such high compression. There was a lot of oil inside the cylinders. But the engine starts, so that's all good. Okay, now we pour in some coolant, set the engine to minimum revs, and just let it run. We'll have the heater on to keep it from overheating. The fan can be switched on, though it doesn't have a shroud. Eh, whatever. The important thing here is not to overheat it, so we'll need to keep an eye on the temperature. Okay, pour the coolant, take the car out, run the motor. Let's go! Okay, so a couple of days have gone by. The car has literally been standing for two days and running almost non-stop. The time has come to do another compression test and sum the whole thing up. But first we need to let it run for a bit, to warm it up and empty the carburetor of gasoline to get a more adequate result. Okay, let it rip. It runs very well. It's nice and smooth, quiet. Sounds like a new engine. Let's do a compression test, shall we? Foot to the floor, let's do this. That's enough. 9.5. Foot to the floor, go for it. Enough. Nine and a half. Wow, we're seeing a healthy increase. Go for it. Stop. 9.5. Let's see where number four is at. Hit it. Enough. 9.5 again. Isn't that something? It's the same across the board. So it used to be 8, 8, 8.3 and 8.3. Now it's the same in all of them. 9.5. So that's a 1.5 kilo increase. And the engine runs like clockwork. And it's quiet. Because we thought it might become noisy. But as a matter of fact, it is just perfect. Okay, so after doing the compression test and seeing just how good this is, the time has come to go for a drive. So how does it feel? Does it have enough torque?
So what do you say? It feels like a strong lotum. Like a really strong lotum? Oh yeah. Like really strong. Really strong. Yeah, the diff ain't welded. A welded diff would have made this even better. You say that was second gear? Yeah, it was in second. You wouldn't have pulled that off in a normal lotta. Oh, definitely. So where does that bring us? So the car sets off in second with ease, correct? Right, gotcha. And you can even hear how great the engine runs. Awesome stuff. Man, I love it. And it sets off in second with no effort. So yeah, this engine has plenty of torque. It's great, right? It's tremendous. So apparently there are no adverse effects to fitting a third compression ring. If anything, the engine runs better than ever. Even without a welded diff, the car rips in second gear when you get off the line. So this engine is strong, man. What can I even say? This is amazing. So in the end, we were able to increase the compression by 1.5 kilos. The engine is stable, it doesn't overheat, it pulls like a beast, so yum. This was awesome. So don't be afraid to fit a third ring and drive around with pleasure. But there is one possible downside that we won't be able to verify in this video. I'm of course talking about potential premature wear. Four rings are gonna wear down the cylinder wall much quicker than just the three. So there is that possibility, but in every other way this was a win. The results are overwhelmingly positive. We have nice and even compression, great torque, sweet. Well guys, some of you ask that we try this. Well, there you go, and it even worked. This was an awesome one. Okay, you guys watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.